Welcome to our latest video on group 4 oxidation states and the inert pair effect. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to list the different oxidation states that group 4 elements exhibit and understand that the plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable down the group due to the inert pair effect. You should also understand that the inert pair effect is a tendency of the S2 pair of electrons in an element's outer shell not to be used in bonding, which means that an oxidation state of 2 less than the maximum is observed in groups 3, 4 and 5 as the groups descend. Finally, you should be able to explain the use of lead 4 compounds as oxidizing agents and tin 2 compounds as reducing agents. Now in our previous video we looked at group 4 elements and we looked at the structure and bonding that exists and we learned that the 5 elements in group 4 are part of the p block in the periodic table and this is because their outer electrons are in p orbitals and we said that each element in group 4 has a characteristic s2 p2 electron arrangement. Now the elements in group 4 show a trend from non-metals at the top to metals at the bottom. So for example carbon and silicon are non-metals while lead and tin are metals. And germanium is classed as a metalloid because it's a substance which has properties that are in between those of a metal and a non-metal. Now in this video we're going to look at the oxidation states of group 4 and how the stability of these change down the group. We're also going to look at the role of lead 4 compounds and tin 2 compounds as oxidizing agents and reducing agents respectively. So now let's look at the oxidation states of group 4. So carbon can have a plus 4 oxidation state which is the most stable and the most common and a plus 2 oxidation state which is much less common. An example of the plus 2 oxidation state is carbon in carbon monoxide. Now silicon only can exhibit a plus 4 oxidation state. Germanium can exhibit a plus 4 which is the most stable and occasionally a plus 2 oxidation state. Tin can exhibit a plus 4 and a plus 2 oxidation state however the plus 4 is the most stable and lead can exhibit a plus 4 and a plus 2 oxidation state However, in lead, the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable. So from this table, you can see that all the elements in group 4 form compounds in which they exist in an oxidation state of plus 4. However, the stability of compounds with elements in this oxidation state decreases on descending the group. So for example, both carbon and silicon form four strong covalent bonds. All the elements after silicon also form compounds in which they can exist in an oxidation state of plus 2. Now when we get to lead, the plus 2 oxidation state is actually the most stable. So you can see that the plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable as we go down the group. Now this plus 2 oxidation state arises from what is known as the inert pair effect. This is when two of the four bonding electrons in the outer shell become less available for bonding down the group. And the plus 2 oxidation state is more stable because of this inert pair effect. And we're going to look at the inert pair effect in more detail on the next slide. So if we take the electron arrangement of carbon, this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And when carbon exhibits the most stable plus 4 oxidation state, it uses all its 2s and 2p electrons in bonding. Now lead has an electron arrangement which ends in 6s2, 6p2. And in lead's more stable plus 2 oxidation state, lead only uses its 6p electrons in bonding. The two 6s electrons are not used in bonding and are referred to as the inert pair. Inert means and reactive and you may have come across this word when you learnt about the noble gases at GCSE. So lead only uses the 6p electrons when it bonds to other elements, when it's exhibiting 
the plus 2 oxidation state. If it exhibits the plus 4 oxidation state, it's using the 6s electrons and the 6p electrons. So the inert pair effect is the tendency of the s2 electrons in an atom to remain paired and not to be used in bonding. And this causes an oxidation state which is too lower than the element's highest oxidation state. Now at A level, you don't have to know why the inert pair effect takes place. It is, however, due to the fact that D and F orbitals are poor shielders of electrons. And as you go down the group, the two S electrons are a little bit more closer to the nucleus than you might expect. However, when you get questions that are asking you why the plus two state becomes more stable down group four, you just have to refer to the fact that the inert pair effect is becoming stronger. You don't have to explain the inert pair effect or mention the poor shielding of D and F orbitals. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question. Pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first question is asking you to list the most stable oxidation states for the following elements. So for this question, you have to realize that if the element is at the top of the group, it will use all its outer shell electrons for bonding. And if it's towards the bottom of the group, there'll be a tendency for the S2 electrons not to be used in bonding. So therefore, an oxidation state will be exhibited, which is two less than the maximum oxidation state. So question 1a is asking for the most stable oxidation state of lead. Now lead is the bottom element in group 4. So the inert pair effect gets stronger down the group. So therefore the most stable oxidation state will be plus 2. Now for question b, thallium has a most stable oxidation state of plus 1. And this is because it's in group 3 and it's at the bottom of group 3. And the inert pair effect becomes stronger down the group. Now nitrogen is at the top of group 5, so its most stable oxidation state will be plus 5. Aluminium is towards the top of group 3, so its most stable oxidation state will be plus 3. Now bismuth is at the bottom of group 5, so therefore its most stable oxidation state will be plus 3, due to the inert pair effect becoming stronger down the group. And germanium is in the middle of group 4, so its most stable oxidation state is plus 4. One mark for each correct stable oxidation state. So here's the second practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So for question two, the question states, lead four chloride is unstable, and on heating produces lead two chloride and chlorine gas. Part A is asking you to write a chemical equation to describe this reaction, and this is worth one mark. So the equation would be PbCl4, goes to PbCl2 plus Cl2. One mark if you had that correct. And for part B, the question says explain why lead 4 chloride can be decomposed to lead 2 chloride so easily. And this is a two mark question. So if you said the plus 2 oxidation state in lead is more stable, you get one mark, due to the inert pair effect becoming stronger down group 4. One mark for the mention of the inert pair effect becoming stronger. So we're now going to turn our attention to the use of lead 4 compounds as oxidizing agents and tin 2 compounds as reducing agents. Now as the plus 2 oxidation state of lead is more stable than the plus 4 oxidation state, Pb4 plus compounds will readily be reduced to form Pb2+. And therefore, compounds such as PbO2, where the lead is in the plus 4 oxidation state, can be used as oxidizing agents. It's because the plus 4 oxidation state will readily reduce to the more stable plus 2. And we make use of this ability to gain electrons in its use as an oxidizing agent 
because an oxidizing agent is a substance that causes other substances to lose electrons. The reason that lead four compounds are good oxidizing agents is that they readily steal electrons from other substances because they readily gain electrons to form the more stable plus two state. Now in contrast, for tin, the plus four oxidation state is slightly more stable than the plus two state. So therefore, SN2 plus compounds will readily be oxidized to form SN4 plus. Now this means that tin two compounds, such as SNCl2, can be used as reducing agents. Now the following equation shows lead 4 oxide PBO2 acting as an oxidizing agent. So PBO2 reacts with concentrated hydrochloric acid to form lead 2 chloride, chlorine and water. So the following chemical equation can be written PBO2 plus 4HCl forms PBCl2 plus Cl2 plus 2H2O. Now the reason that lead 4 oxide is classed as an oxidizing agent here is because it oxidizes the Cl- ion in concentrated hydrochloric acid to chlorine gas. So underneath the equation you can see the different changes in oxidation state that have taken place. So lead is plus 4 oxidation state in PBO2 and it changes to plus 2 oxidation state when it forms PBCl2. The oxygen doesn't change its oxidation state in this reaction because it's minus 2 when it's PBO2 and it's minus 2 in water. The hydrogen also doesn't change its oxidation state because it's plus 1 when it's in HCl and it's plus 1 when it's in water. However, the chlorine does change its oxidation state. It's minus 1 when it's in HCl and it's 0 when it's chlorine gas because chlorine's an element. So you can see that the oxidation state has changed from minus 1 to 0. The oxidation number has gone up and therefore the Cl- ion has been oxidized to chlorine gas. Now the reason that Cl- ions can lose electrons to form chlorine is because the Pb plus 4 compound is able to gain electrons. It's easily reduced because the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable. Now in unit 4, we came across tin 2 chloride being used as a reducing agent in the formation of aromatic amines. And we've seen nitrobenzene be converted to phenylamine using tin 2 chloride as a reducing agent. And this is made in situ as part of the reaction when tin is added to concentrated hydrochloric acid. So tin 2 chloride here acts as a reducing agent because the tin plus 2 oxidation state readily changes to the more stable tin plus 4 oxidation state. So therefore tin when it's in the plus 2 oxidation state readily oxidizes it readily loses electrons to form the more stable plus 4 oxidation state. And when it readily loses electrons, it causes another substance to gain the electrons. It causes another substance to be reduced, and in this case that other substance is nitrobenzene, which is reduced. It gains electrons to form phenylamine. Now another example of where tin 2 compounds act as reducing agents 
is in their reaction with Fe3 plus ions in acidic solutions. So we can represent this with an ionic equation. So Sn2 plus will react with two Fe3 plus ions to form Sn4 plus and two Fe2 plus. Now we can see that this equation is balanced because we have one tin on the left and one tin on the right and we have two ion species on the left and two on the right but the charges are also balanced. There's a total of 8 plus on the left hand side so tin 2 plus and 2 Fe3 plus gives a total of 8 plus on the left hand side and there's 8 plus on the right hand side Sm4 plus and 2 Fe2 plus. Now we can see why tin 2 plus here acts as a reducing agent because if we look at the oxidation states we can see that tin has gone from a plus 2 oxidation state to a plus 4 oxidation state and iron has gone from a plus 3 oxidation state to a plus 2 oxidation state so the tin has been oxidized from plus 2 to plus 4 it's lost electrons where have those electrons gone they've gone to the iron plus 3 oxidation state and this has caused the iron plus 3 to go to iron plus 2. So the iron has been reduced from plus 3 to plus 2. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one is asking you to explain what is meant by the following terms. So the first term is oxidizing agent. Well, an oxidizing agent is a substance that causes another substance to lose electrons or gain oxygen. If you said that, there's one mark. And for part B, you're asked to explain the term reducing agent. Well, a reducing agent is a substance that causes another substance to gain electrons or lose oxygen. One mark for that. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two, part one says that tin and carbon are both stable in oxidation state plus four, whilst lead is more stable as plus two. And the question asks to explain the difference in the stabilities of these oxidation states. So this is a one mark question and this is due to the inert pair effect becoming more significant or stronger down the group. If you said that, there's one mark. For part two, the question says lead 4 oxide can act as an oxidizing agent when it's reacted with concentrated hydrochloric acid. Write an equation for this reaction. This is a one mark question. So the equation is PbO2 plus 4HCl goes to PbCl2 plus 2H2O plus Cl2. If you have that correct, you get one mark. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to list the different oxidation states that group four elements exhibit and understand that the plus two oxidation state becomes more stable down the group due to the inert pair effect. You should also be able to understand that the inert pair effect is the tendency of the S2 pair of electrons in an element's outer shell not to be used in bonding which means that an oxidation state of two less than the maximum is observed in groups three four and five as the groups descend finally you should be able to explain the use of lead four compounds as oxidizing agents and tin two compounds as reducing agents so that concludes this video lesson so please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.